So I did ask you to have your reference table out. What were, and I know you can't see mine up here. It's probably too far away, too little for you to be able to see. So I do want you to have your reference table out in front of you. Um, I think we started this process yesterday, but I don't think we get, went through it all since we didn't have all the notes everybody needed. Um, so uh, in the end, we did take notes here on page two. So if you do need to go back to the video, today's video, you can just pause and get those notes from yesterday on both pages. That's easy. Yeah, go ahead. That's that stapler should go through all of them. Okay. All right. So now we're going to make sure you know how to use this reference table and those properties to. Oh, it's out of staples. I'll hook you up in a minute. All right. Nope. So we're going to make sure you know how to use those properties to name the mineral. So if you were in lab already, uh, uh, did anybody else start this with the actual hand do the mineral? I did. What class? Mega. Mega. So today? Yesterday. yesterday. Oh, yesterday he handed you the minerals and had to name them? Yeah. Okay. So sounds like Mr. Mega started it. I don't think Mr. Winter started it yet. Anybody have? Okay. So he's probably either starting it today or Monday. I started it today. This is not the one I wanted. Okay. I know we started looking at this yesterday, but now I want to make sure we know the name of this mineral and how to find it. It's a lot like guess who, like I said, um, for the last couple of days. You ask yourselves questions. Now with the real game, guess who, you would knock down the people that it was not. When we did it and together, we crossed off the names. You can't really cross off on the reference table. I mean, you could. But the problem with crossing off the ones it's not on your reference table is you're gonna need this reference table over and over and over and over again. So if you have them all crossed off, you won't be able to use it. So that's where the post-it notes come in. The post-it notes are going to cover up the minerals that we know we're not looking at. So let's go through the process. On guess who you got to figure out, you got to name whatever, or you had, oh my gosh, the words. When you play Guess Who, you get to pick the first question that you're going to ask. When you are identifying minerals, you don't randomly pick. You go in the order that they're, that they're listed in on the reference table. So what I'm talking about is our first question is going to be what's the luster, metallic or non-metallic? Then we're going to determine the hardness, then decide does it have cleavage or fracture, then we look at the color, and then we look at the distinguishing characteristics. We don't really look at the use. We don't really look at the composition. But then once we have all of these guys over here, we can name the mineral on that side. So let's give it a whirl with this one, just to make sure you guys are comfortable when you get to lab. Those of you who already had it, if you need to go back, I'm sure Mr. Meagle will let you go back if you got some wrong. So we're going to start with this one. What's the first question we need to ask ourselves? Luster. Is this mineral metallic or non-metallic? Non-metallic, it does not look like a metal. Yeah, it's a little shiny, but it still does not look like a metal. So if this was guess who, which ones would we be knocking down? All the metallic ones are the ones we'd be knocking down. Again, we can't knock them down in this class, but we can cover them up. So what I recommend doing is over on this side, covering up all of these that are metallic. Now you can cover them up on this side like I did, or if you wanna cover up the names, you could do it over there. I like, because this is where we're looking right now, this is where I like to cover up. So you've covered up everything that's metallic. Again, we covered up the metallic ones because this is non-metallic. We don't wanna look at the ones that are metallic. I think I pointed out the either one yesterday. How did I tell you to look to see if this is the either one? the color. For the either one, there's only two choices for the color for the either one. So I like to knock off the either one or keep it right away. Is this the either one? No, it's not metallic silver. It's not earthy red. So I'm just going to include that in the ones I'm covering up. I still got a lot left. So unfortunately, it didn't help us that much, but we did narrow it down. What do we look at next? 
hardness. And how do we determine hardness? We went through this yesterday. Scratch it. There's a couple ways to scratch. So I saw a bunch of you um, mimicking, miming how to scratch it on glass. Um, you may have noticed I labeled these up here. Go ahead and add those right to your reference table. They'll always give you that information. So it says glass equals 5.5 and fingernail equals 2.5. They'll always tell you that if you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt to scratch this on glass. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but it does not scratch the glass. So because this does not scratch the glass, what do I know about the hardness of this mineral? It's less than, and actually we're going to say it's less than or equal to 5.5. So what am I going to get rid of? Anything that's more than 5.5. So they do have them in nice order here. So I can get rid of everything from potassium feldspar down. I am going to leave those ones, the 5.5 one, because it could probably could be that one as well. So yeah, we got rid of four or five, but there's still a whole bunch left. So I'm going to jump right into attempting to scratch this with my fingernail. When you do this, you don't have to like put the most effort, like you don't have to try to like break it in half with your fingernail. I mean, you do have to put some force, but don't hurt yourself. What'd you say? It's scratched. So what's harder, my fingernail or the mineral? Fingernail's harder. So I know that this is less than or equal to 2.5. So that does get me down to quite a few, or got rid of quite a few. We only have this small section left. What's the next thing we want to look at? Uh, not yet. Cleavage or fracture? Cleavage again, what does cleavage mean? Smooth break. Fracture, the break is going to be rough and bumpy. This is actually a really good example. You don't get much flatter than that. It's definitely broken flat, but I do want to point out, I'm not sure if you can see it, up here, this mineral only breaks one way flat. This way, it's actually rough and bumpy and lumpy. The kicker is as long as there's some cleavage, then it's considered cleavage. So yes, it has fracture on this side, but because it's got some cleavage, this is considered to have cleavage which means, and you might have to look under your post-it note, cleavage, the check mark is on the left of the line, fracture is on the right. So that really only got rid of sulfur. And I can't really cover up sulfur without covering up talc. So I'm just gonna remember it's not sulfur. Now we look at color. Color is the next choice. What color would you call this? Clear, colorless, white. So they don't always have to be just one answer. I would say absolutely clear would work, colorless, but I would also say this is whitish. Does that help me so much here? Could it be tell white to green? White, it, which means it can be white or green or anything in between. Could this be tell so far? Maybe, yeah. We know it's not sulfur already. Uh, selenonite gypsum. White to pink to gray. That means it can be white or pinkish or gray or anything in between those colors. So yeah, colorless to yellow, is it's colorless. So yeah, colorless to white, yeah, black to dark brown. No, okay, so I at least got rid of one. Now we look down the distinguishing characteristics column. We've got telk has a greasy feel. Selenonite gypsum is easily scratched by a fingernail. Muscovite mica is flexible in thin sheets. And halite has cubic cleavage and tastes salty. So remember yesterday I mentioned you won't be tasting these. But you can always ask me or Mr. Winters or Mr. Mega, does this taste salty? And we will answer you truthfully because we don't want you licking our minerals. So if you licked this one, this one would not taste salty. 
So it's not salty. Also, I want to point out cubic cleavage. Here is a piece of halite. What do you notice about this piece of halite? What shape? Cube, like a rectangle cube. So this, while it is rectangular, rectangles don't have this weird corner and things like that. So this is not halite. Is it flexible? Can I bend it? I cannot. So that leaves greasy feel or easily scratched by a fingernail. Hey, does that feel greasy feel? No, it, it's literally the opposite of greasy. Greasy will feel like you just put lotion on your hands and then picked up a rock. So it'll feel a little slippery, but this one, when you go to rub it, it is the opposite of that. But remember when I scratched it with my fingernail, it literally feels like nothing to scratch that. It scratches so easily. So since it's not a greasy feel and it's easily scratched by a fingernail, I am holding a piece of selenonite gypsum. So that's how you're gonna walk through this in lab. So hopefully that will help you get through your lab stuff. Yeah. So on the regions, mm -hmm. if it is the halite, will they tell us if it tastes like salt? They would, but they would also make sure if it was halite that you got a really good piece that was nice and cubic. How does it that? There's a lab final exam this year. So I don't know if I've mentioned this to your class. Part of your regents this year is a lab regents. It is 16 of the 101 points that you take on the regents. And what I do is we set up three very mini labs, nothing like the ones we're doing in class, like not those ones that you have readings and lots of questions about. Three very small labs that you get eight minutes a piece at. And one of them, it's really what the labs are, anything that's hands-on. So not the map one that we just did, not the graphing one that we did. Could be the density where you had to shape it into the Play-Doh. Um, rocks and minerals, they're definitely fair games because you have to have them in front of you. So yeah, it is something that might be asked about. Like state test we did. It's a lot so, like, yes. If you took the eighth grade state test, it's a lot like that. If you remember rolling a ball down a ruler, it hit like a yeah. cup. Yeah, it's just like that where you have plenty of time to do them, but it is a hands-on practice type situation. It is one of the last few days you'll have lab. So we do it in school during your lab period. So yes, those of you who have first period lab will have to make sure that their butt is where it belongs that day. <clears throat> yeah, the one day that I make sure that you have to be there. Any other questions about that? We'll talk and practice for it. So don't worry about it. It's not... And that's why when I emphasize during lab, make sure you know what you're doing during lab. So if your lab partner is amazing, make sure they're explaining things that you don't understand. Don't just copy their answers. Make sure that person who knows everything is explaining it and making sure you understand it too. Okay, wow. I'm sensing some waves of disapproval coming off of somebody here. All right, um, the next page of our notes. So we did page two, we did page three. Page four, I title page four. Where do it? There are just 10 things you just gotta know about minerals. The other pages, everything was on your reference table. Like there was really not much memorizing for everything we've done so far. These 10 things that you just gotta know. Here's the first one. Here's the first really weird one. The elements, silicon and oxygen. They combine to form tetrahedral units. Tetrahedral units. What the heck is a tetrahedral unit? Let me show you. Oh, so I should also point out, if you remember uh, from page one of our reference table, if you want to in fact flip back to page one real quick, that um, silicon and oxygen by mass, they make up the most things in the crust. So silicon and oxygen are really popular 
If you look through the composition section on your reference table for page 16, you'll see that silicon and oxygen pop up the most because they're in most of the rocks that are around here. Uh, so what's a tetrahedral unit? It's this shape. So really what it means, the, each one of these little ball things represents either a silicon or an oxygen. Anytime silicon and oxygen combine, they make this pyramid shape. What do you need to know? Silicon and oxygen make a tetrahedral unit. That's all that I've ever seen them ask about it. Uh, I've And I've only seen them ask about it maybe three or four times in the, all the years I've been teaching. Moving on though. So the physical properties of a mineral depend on, we already took notes on this. Does anybody remember what determines the luster, hardness, cleavage, fracture, or color of a mineral? Huh? No, that is how you figure out the hardness. Not just the composition, the, arrangement of atoms. the way the atoms are arranged. So that's actually the kicker. We would think it was made determined by what it's made out of. But that's actually not the moral of the story. Atoms, the way those atoms are arranged, determine the properties. So the color, the hardness, the streak, cleavage or fracture are all determined by the internal arrangement of atoms. And here's the best example I have of that. Graphite, check out to see the composition of graphite. Where do you look to see the composition of graphite? Yep, reference table, graphite is the first mineral on the mineral chart. Check out its composition. It says it's C. If you don't know what C is, check out the bottom. C equals carbon. So the tips of your pencil are made out of 100% carbon. You know what else is made out of 100% carbon? Diamonds. Diamonds, like a diamond engagement ring. And graphite, the tips of your pencil are made out of the same thing. So their composition is the same. There are no other ingredients in your pencil or in my ring, 100% carbon. Do they have many similarities? Are they the same color? Are they the same hardness? Nope, in fact, graphite's the weakest mineral we'll ever touch. Diamonds are the strongest mineral, the hardest mineral that there are. So they don't have the same color, they don't have the same hardness. Do they have the same luster even? Diamonds are non-metallic, graphite is metallic. Do they have literally anything in common? Yeah, only thing is that they're 100% carbon. We use diamonds for jewelry. A diamond drill bit or a diamond saw is used to cut very hard substances. While graphite is used for pencil lead, or they will even powder up graphite and make it into a lubricant. I believe brake um, break lubricant, if you've ever changed brakes, you gotta put some of uh, this black goopy stuff onto the brake pads. Is, is, is it, what were you calling it something? No, it's soft. Oh, it's messy, it's ugly. It's literally graphite. So composition, even though that makes sense, would determine what it's made out of or how the properties are. It's not just the composition. It's how those atoms are put together. All right, to wrap this up, just kind of a little bit about minerals. There are thousands and thousands of known minerals, but only a few are found almost everywhere. So if you know how to identify about a dozen, you will be able to identify the most of the minerals you'll find in rocks around here. In fact, if you can use this reference table, you should be able to identify any minerals in any rock you can find in your yard. Most rocks are made up of minerals. So minerals are the building blocks of most rocks, but there are a couple of exceptions. Coal is a rock, but it's not made out of minerals. And limestone is also a rock, and it's not always made out of minerals. So I like to say 
all minerals are rocks, but not all rocks are minerals. With that, I just wanna make sure that you guys are comfortable using your reference table. So I called it homework, but you guys have almost 15 minutes to do it. You should be able to get it done in class if you could open up your packet to pages six and seven. We'll do one together to make sure you're comfortable. So it starts off with what's the hardness and use of sulfur? So obviously you need your reference table. This is not off the top of your head stuff. Find sulfur. Read over to the hardness. What's the hardness of sulfur? Two. And what is its use? Sulfuric acid. So sulfur is made to use sulfuric or to make Sulfur is used to make sulfuric acid. So this is just getting you familiar with this reference table. If you're having trouble finding anything, ask me for help, but just go through and fill in the blanks for these. It shouldn't, it should take you about the 15 minutes that we've got. If not, if you don't finish it up, do make sure you have it done by Monday. I'll be checking it on Monday to make sure it's done. Any questions? Okie doke, finish that up for homework. 